Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. So now we are going to do lead code weekly challenge. First question that is longest of sequence with limited sum. And as you can see, this is easy task question. So surely the way it is written like that way only we are required to do means not much of tricks would be there. But in this question, there we were not a, we are we were not required to do as it is. But we are required to do just tweak a little bit and then on with it was easy question. So that was about this question. So let's get started with this question. First we'll go through the question description and after that we'll run some test cases and then we'll come up that how we are required to code this question. And then I'll go uh, move you through the code walkthrough for this question. So yeah, let's get started. So in this question, we are given with an integer array num of length n and an integer array queries with length m. Okay, so both are having different different lengths. Now comes the part that written an array answer of length m, but the answer should be of the length of number of uh, length of the queries. The answer of i simply represents the maximum size of subsequence that you can take from nouns such that sum of the elements is less than or equal to query of i. So basically the thing is that what we are required to do is at answer of i, we are simply required to return the maximum size of subsequence. That subsequence could be formed out of the whole array itself and even some parts of the array or even could be none of the elements. That is the scene here. So that they want to say and that sum which would be there, it should be basically less than the sum which is being present at the query of i. So this is the only part of the statement of this question which gives us hint that how we are required to do this question. Just read this clearly once again and then we will be going ahead that how we are required to do this question. So, yeah. Now comes the next part that how we are required to do the question, but let's walk through this particular example. So, in this, you can see that we are given with nums 4, 5, 2, 1, then queries 3, 10, 21, right? So, query of 0, that is at 3, sorry, query of index 0. Am I right, using the right term? Basically, I just wanted to say that in this queries array at the index 0, uh, where we are given with 3, we are basically required to return that particular size of subsequence in which we are getting the sum basically less than 3. So that's the thing which we are required to return here. So subsequence of 2, 1. Okay has the sum less than equal to 3, right? It can be proven that 2 is the maximum size of the subsequence. So answer of 0 is basically 2. So they want to say that in this num, we are having the subsequence 2 comma 1, right? So this 2 comma 1, when we add up this 2 plus 1, right? So it becomes 3. So basically, which is less than or equal to 3, right? So here it is equal to 3 only. So that's why at this particular first, we would be having size of a subsequence as 2 because here you can see it is the size 2 only. Then subsequence 4, 5, 1. So when we add them up, what we get, we get 10 as our answer, right? So that's why at this particular index, we will be returning as the size of this particular is 3. So that's why here our answer would be 3. So at the end, we are required to have the sum as 21 and we are checking that what will correspond to 21. So here we can see 4, 5, 2 and 1. When we add them up, so basically what we get, we get basically 5 plus 4, 9, 10, 1, 10, 11, 12. So that is basically less than 21, right? But it is the maximum which is less than 21, right? So that's why and even we can't add up anything more to the same. So that's why here our answer is 4. So that is the thing. So just think about this uh, question that here, although they are saying that we are required to return the number of elements, 
here we are required to return the number of elements right but that elements required to be correspond to the sum and that sum should be less than or equal to the sum which is being given at that particular index of the query right so in this even if we change the sequence uh, basically change the ordering of our array also then also it doesn't matter as much just because of this tag because we are just uh, concerned with the size right and in that size also we are just concerned that it sum should be less than r number we are not required to return the sequence we are just required to return the sum so in that context only this question becomes much easier earlier i was thinking that this is longest sub sequence question so surely it would be of dp while using that longest sub sequence but that is not the case here it is much easier question because it just required to return the size not the whole sub sequence so that's why we can change the ordering of this question and while we change the ordering of this question we can easily use here prefix sum and then we use the prefix sum so that in that context only we will uh, have one prefix sum array and in that prefix sum array we will be traversing that prefix sum array and it and we will check that at whatever portion we are able to get a sum which is basically maximum less than our given query then we will return that particular size because in prefix sum how we do prefix sum our first element that is one element is corresponding to the first prefix sum then second element plus first element that is two elements are being involved so it will be stored at the index 1 and it correspond to the prefix sum of two elements right so like that only we will be able to get a number of elements and because of that only we will be able to get that how many elements make up the that particular sum and how much sum is basically less than maximum less than our given query so like that we only we are able to do this particular question so this was all the explanation about this question so let me now show you for the code to walk through this question so here we are taking directly the sizes of both of them even if we don't take that also is not much concern we could directly use that also so here first we are sorting this and that's what i was indicating you that we are sorting even if we require sub sequence because question says that we are required to return the size of the sub sequence or the number present in the sub sequence so that's why we are able to sort it in sorting we can change for our convenience because we are not required to return the exact positioning we are required to return the sum so how we are starting this would be acting as our answer for present is a temporary answer and then here we are having a prefix sum vector and then what we are doing <coughs> we are storing our sum till that particular index and then we are pushing that particular sum into a prefix sum vector and then we are having this vector of int answer which will be having the size m and why m size because we are having m queries and at the end we were required to return m size vector only as asked in the question and initially we will be having zero means initialize with all zero because there could be a case that when our whole of the sub sequence don't have any answer which will be equal to the query which is being presented so that's the thing now here we are solving this we are basically traversing our queries that is m queries which are there and then b are basically moving ahead with the prefix sum means at each index whatsoever it will be stored we will be directly checking it so here we are checking that is prefix sum is is prefix sum of j is basically less than or equal to query of i then we are directly assigning answer of i equals to j plus 1 so here why we are not doing push back it is all because of this fact only that what if we got one more answer which is basically greater than the previous answer but it is still less than our query of i right so that's why here we are assigning so that we could override that particular answer so that's why we are doing like this else we will be breaking it out means if we find a greater prefix sum right 
so if at particular moment we are able to figure out with a greater prefix sum then it sure that the other upcoming prefix sum would also be greater only because here as per the constraint you can see that we are having all positives only right so the upcoming prefix sum would be greater only not the lesser one because if if it would have been a negative side then surely there would have been some that we can get some prefix sum which is smaller but here that is not the case so just for increasing our uh, means basically decreasing our time complexity we are doing this particular step and after this loop ends we will be easily able to get that answer and this is our accepted solution so this was all for this particular question now comes the part for time complexity so basically time complexity for this question you can clearly see that we are using two loops m into n so that's why our time complexity for this question is m into n and comes the part for the space complexity so space complexity is basically this one that is uh, space complexity is basically order of n basically the number of elements which are being present for calculation of this prefix sum so the time complexity is basically order of m into n and the space complexity is basically the number of elements which are being present right in our in our this particular vector num so that is the space complexity because we are having our prefix sum so this was all for this particular question i hope you like the explanation for this thing and yeah if you like it then please do like and subscribe to my channel and do share it among your friends so that it could get to more of people and it would be much helpful for them also yeah so this was all and one more last thing is that basically some of the students ask me about a uh, one on one mentorship sessions and even a structured course which would be there even one on one doubt clearer sessions would be there and these sort of things which should be there in a particular course basically they ask me about all these things whenever they are having one on one sessions with me so for that purpose i would like to recommend you for newton school so here in newton school basically there are a lot of courses which you could select you can head over to the description and here, there there would be one link and by clicking over that link you could directly get towards a page where you will be having all the information about the all the courses which would be there in this particular newton school so the best part of newton school is basically there is no upfront fee so that is one of the best thing which i like about the newton school and the thing is that when the courses are being done and you are basically uh, when placed and the package is also lie between 5 lpa to 40 lpa so whenever you are being placed in any of these packages after being getting placed then only you are required to pay for your course fee else the course uh, would be completely free for you so this is the criteria which is there at newton school so yeah if you have any sort of uh, if your requirements lie in this particular criteria that you require one on one mentorship session one on one doubt clearing session and even a particular structured course then you could head over for newton school so yeah this was all for this particular video thanks for watching